Okay, so after an atrocity like the one in Texas on Sunday where a shooter went into a church and shot up a whole bunch of folks whom he didn't know, including a whole family, we like to ask the question, why? Why did that occur? Why did that shooter go off the deep end and walk into a church and kill all these innocent people? Why did the truck driver in New York run over a bunch of innocent people he didn't know? Um, why do these things occur? Why do they keep happening? When's it going to stop? What can we do to help it stop? And I did a video a couple days ago pointing you to a book that I wrote called Mind Hacking Happiness that explains the existence and the operation of the mind soup to nuts, how it works and how bad actors wind up becoming bad actors. And of course, it covers a lot of other stuff as well, including how your inner BS works and how to take it out of the way and create happiness for yourself, etc. But it explains soup to nuts how the human mind works, why it does what it does, why people go a little crazy sometimes in being able to take actions that are, uh, let's say, off the beaten path and not very uh, pro-social. Um, but if you want to understand why people like the Texas shooter do what they do, I'm about to explain it to you. It is not a sexy answer. It is not a soundbite answer. It'll take a few minutes, but... This will explain every bad actor you have ever experienced and that you will ever experience or you've ever heard about or that you will ever hear about from time immemorial through all future events. This is how it works. So to explain it, <clears throat> we first have to start with the basic fact that your brain is your organ of survival, right? It is the organ that is there to help us survive from one moment to the next, okay? And that's basically what the brain does. It's a big part of the nervous system. The nervous system uh, is there basically to help us figure out what the world is and how to survive from now into the next minute, into the next hour, into the next day, into the next year, et cetera. And the brain from the memory function helps us remember where the food and water is, our cognitive functions help us figure out how to build a shelter. Our humor helps us figure out what funny things to say to get somebody to jump into bed with us, that type of thing. Well, in the brain, <clears throat> there's this thing called the limbic system. And the limbic system in particular scans our senses and our thoughts for threats uh, from our environment. So uh, when you smell that scent of gas in the house, um, the limbic system fires up the fear response. The limbic system creates all of our what we call negative emotions, but basically it creates the, the programs of emotions that help us move into action at that point. Well, when you smell that gas or you look down on the ground and you see the, the hose and you go, oh my God, is that a snake? That's your limbic system firing up, scanning your senses for potential threats from the world. Now, in that moment or in that charter, <clears throat> a second question must be asked. Well, a threat to what exactly? Because if I'm supposed to be scanning the senses and the environment and the horizons for threats, well, a threat to what? What is it that I'm supposed to be protecting? And that creates the need for a psychological concept called self. Now, the self is, of course, our body, because any threat to our body means that we may not survive into tomorrow. But work at University of Virginia and UIUC by David Cohn, Tiffany Burnett White, uh, some other Sam Harris did a couple of studies on this stuff, proves that our concept of self and our mind includes more than just our bodies and can be very convoluted at times and very complex to include, you know, other ideas about religion, politics, uh, memories of self, favorite color, uh, you know, whether we're pro-choice or pro-life or, you know, all these various things come together into our mind to create our sense of self beyond our body. Now, the limbic system basically scans our thoughts and perceptions for threats to this augmented sense of self as well. Now, in the case of the Texas shooter, he was a part of a family, and his family was a portion of his sense of self. And so all of their associated attachments become a, sense of, a portion of his sense of self as well. So when he perceived a family feud was going on, and this lady was a threat to one of his family members or his family or whatever, then she became something that was a threat that needed to be defended against. Now, the way that the human mind works is 
by a number of associations, right? When you think of a fire truck, you don't think of just the fire truck. You think of the firemen. You think of the hats, the jackets, the hose, the water. Maybe even a house on fire would enter your uh, visual um, imagination. These are all associations connected with the idea of fire truck. Well, <clears throat> in this person's mind, in the shooter's mind, when he was sensing a threat to self, a family feud incident, in his warped sense of reality, because, of course, perceptions can be different in different people, and he has this uh, shade of gray craziness that he lands on this spectrum somewhere. Well, he saw this particular lady who went to this church as a threat to self, his mind's self, his family's self. And so he went to attack that threat, but because of the associations that are connected with that lady, that she goes to that church, and then the associations of that church and all the people who wind up going to that church, these you know association chains can go on three or four or five links down the, the line sometimes, and in a sick mind, what he is seeing as a threat to self is everything connected with that lady is now a target of his ire or his aggression that he needs to take out and uh, uh, attack all of these things associated with this lady, I guess, who was in this family feud with his family. <clears throat> so he walks into this church and shoots everything in sight because everything even closely associated with this lady is guilty of the sin of attacking his family. Um, I do understand that he went or was planning on going and attacking uh, his chain of command at his uh, military base uh, after that maybe uh, is the, is the um, speculation there because of something else that he saw was an attack on self because, you know, if he didn't want to get out of the military and they thought he was crazy and they put him out of the military, well, that's attack on his self as well. And he's going to go fight those dragons as well. Um, but basically this is how the human mind works. And in the, in the event of the, the New York truck driver uh, or the truck renter who ran over all those innocent folks on the bike path, well, his association of self had to do with Islam or his connection with ISIS or whatever ideas that he became radical radicalized locally um, over the last couple of years, he made those attachments to self in his mind. They became part of him, right? And so being outside that group, being a portion of the others or a different tribe or whatever you want to want to call it, he found that to be a threat to self. And so um, when he took his actions, he was attacking people who he saw as a threat to self, right? He saw these people as potentially supporting a, um, a regime that was attacking his uh, religion or his uh, country or whatever ideas of self he became associated with. He then took actions in self-defense, which is kind of a sick self-defense, but basically he is taking actions of self-defense to defend his ideas that his mind created. And all this is explained in this book. And every bit of your pain and suffering, every bit of your negative emotions follows the same trail just to a lesser degree. But when you get uh, uh, pissed off when somebody cuts you off in traffic or something like that, or you get upset at something that happened at work, basically it's the same thing going on in your mind is that there's a portion of your sense of self, an idea or some type of attachment in there that's being attacked or that you perceive as being attacked. And so if you can get in there and uh, throw a wrench into that whole system, um, you can stop all your negative crap or a bunch of it and not have to deal with all those negative thoughts and emotions and uh, reactions that you have and raise your happiness game up through the roof. Well, this book explains how to do that, but this book explains then also why people go off the rails, why people do stupid shit, why wars exist, um, why greed exists, etc. But if you want to understand why these people are going to do what they do, you need to understand the human mind. Now, the next step is, what do we do about it? How do we decrease the amount of violent action that occurs against innocent people? And the answer to that question is that we must attack that problem where the problem resides, which is from within the human mind. Okay. We need to be able to create the perceptions and attachments of self that are 
less likely to result in violent behavior. And so this whole uh, echo chamber of social media and things like that, it's moving us in the wrong direction. The whole separation of uh, one group into the, next, into the from the other group is moving us in the wrong direction. Because when you start to identify people with uh, groups or with certain ideas or uh, certain ideas of identity, <clears throat> you're moving them in the wrong direction to be able to uh, smooth uh, differences of, of self or differences of opinion, differences uh, uh, of conflict that occur within the mind, right? So if you want to reduce the amount of a, um, violent attacks that occur in the future, we need to do it by attacking the process within the human mind that helps people uh, run off the rails and create that stuff. So it is a deep dive of we need to understand the human mind better to be able to build into our education systems things that can help r people relieve their pressure before it builds up to the point they want to go out and shoot everybody, okay? We need to be able to put into our mechanisms at work and in society the ability for people to identify with others who have differing opinions and see the commonalities of their humanity rather than see the differences of whether they're pro-choice or pro-life and then they're off bombing an abortion clinic, right? Um, we need to build into our entire existence a different way of thinking, a different way of seeing that dumps us into this mind place called meta-awareness where we can take a half step back from the operations of the mind to say, whoa, that stuff really isn't me and that stuff's trying to control me and at the moment I'm not going to be controlled by it. And I'm going to actually flip a switch and take control of this process just like you would if you uh, were daydreaming and you realize, oh, my gosh, I'm daydreaming. I got to get back to work. Well, that's the moment of meta-awareness where you step back and say, oh, my mind is daydreaming. I need to refocus my attention and change my, my brain patterns and my thought patterns. Well, there, you can do that intentionally. And that's what we need to teach people to do. It's what we need to teach kids to do. It's what we need to teach uh, the troubled among us to do. And that is the path to reducing these shootings. It's not going to be, uh, you know, more gun control legislation, or, although I think some common sense uh, steps should be taken in trying to keep crazy people from buying guns. But, um, you know, there are some uh, deeper issues at play here. So you wanted to understand why? Sorry that it wasn't a quick answer or a soundbite answer. If you want to really understand why and understand why the mind of the human being works the way it does, you got to pick up a book. Sorry, but you got to read. I know it sucks, but this is one of the most important books in the 21st century. So there's that. Hope things are well for you guys. Talk to you soon. Peace.